the Jays are making moves as they made an interesting trade today, trading a player that was on their roster to start the season. So we're going to break that trade down this episode of Jays Digest, as well as some major injury updates, as well as that heartbreaking loss that we all just experienced. We're going to break all that down and much more coming up next. What's up, Jays fans? Nick Goss here, host of Jays Digest. And Interesting day today. The Jays just lost a pretty brutal game against the Seattle Mariners in a game that saw them inches away from an Ernie Clement walk-off. I was ready to make the walk-off video. I was pumped up. But unfortunately, the Jays fall. They do still take the series 2-3 to three and uh, now are 6-7 and seven after today's loss. But we have some interesting things to discuss as a lot of news came out regarding the Jays. Before we do, a quick reminder to hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 12,500. Thank you for your continued support as we pump out daily Jays videos every single day for you guys. Thank you for that. But let's get into the first topic today. And before we cover the game a little bit, let's uh, let's get into some moves they made today. And they made an interesting trade. And this is a very familiar name, Wes Parsons, who made the team out of spring training. And they ultimately chose to, to keep Wes Parsons instead of Yasver Zulueta, who they DFA'd and who went to the Reds. But they traded him today to the Cleveland Guardians in exchange for international signing bonus pool space. And we saw they used some of that international uh, signing um, you know, pool space that they have on a prospect a few days ago in a video I covered then. So they just recuperated some of that and got some more back in the Wes Parsons trade. And Wes Parsons is an interesting guy. He has some decent stuff. Like, he can compete at the major league level with his stuff. But unfortunately for the Blue Jays, he just wasn't able to put it uh, together at all. He had a very, very bad season uh, so far uh, this year for the Blue Jays. And quite frankly, they don't have any room for him, especially once Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson come back. So they obviously DFA'd him. They wanted him to go. And then the Cleveland Guardians. And realistically, Wes Parsons is a fine option for a team that needs depth in their pitching rotation in case injuries we saw Shane Bieber go out he's gonna be out for the season for the Cleveland Guardians so Wes Parsons they get a, a reliever a guy who can go multiple innings a potential starter for them depending how he does and the Jays get something back which is better than what I thought they were gonna get which was nothing they get something back which is uh, in the form of money to sign some more international free agents after they made their first signing just a few days ago so an overall you know not too big of a uh, move we're obviously going to cover it because I cover every move here on this channel but nothing too crazy but very interesting nonetheless and i'm very happy they were able to get some sort of value for west parsons a guy again they uh they started with in the regular season and chose him over guys like Yazra Zuleta and Paulo Espino who ultimately now Espino is with the team and looks a bit better than what west parsons could bring but let us know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on that move nothing too crazy but also it's nice to get some value for your players, especially when you're uh, a guy like Wes Parsons who didn't do much for the Blue Jays. But let's move on now. We have some bigger things to talk about, which is a major injury updates and a heartbreaking loss. And quite frankly, uh, that loss was absolutely rough. Again, Ernie Clement, there were some positives to take out of that, which we'll get to in a minute. But Ernie Clement was inches away. I thought we had that blue, but Jorge Polanco absolutely robbed us of that. But before we get into that, let's get into some of the injury updates. So today, we had Danny Jansen, who will uh, do his DHing for the Bisons and catch twice over the weekend. You have Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson will both pitch tomorrow, and Alec Manoa will start Saturday. So a lot of stuff obviously going on now. When you're looking at this, this is good because Alejandro Kirk has been very, very bad to start the season, at least on the offensive side of things. Need Danny Jansen back. The Blue Jays desperately need that pop. They desperately need his, you know, his veteran leadership, all those things, and he should be close to returning soon. As well as Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson seem to be very close as they're now pitching in game. So they should be back hopefully uh, within a week's time at the very least. And this is huge for the Toronto Blue Jays because we saw today the bullpen was taxed. Chad Green wasn't available. Trevor Richards wasn't available. Jimmy Garcia looked absolutely dominant. Throw do 99.8 miles per hour. But ultimately, they had to put Tim Mesa in in the extra innings. And let's get into this game a little bit. And the offense was pretty quiet besides that Vladimir Guerrero Jr. absolute moonshot. 459 feet to tie the game. And then ultimately, they battled. They got it into the uh, the bottom of the ninth there with the bases loaded. Two outs for Ernie Clement. John Schneider pulled all the right strings. He did everything right. All the pinch hitting, the pinch running. Daniel Vogelbach drew a great walk to load the bases. And then Ernie Clement did his job to a degree. Had a bit of a wild swing in the second pitch. But did his job, swung the bat, and uh, it quite didn't land in the middle of the gap, which would have won us the game and would have improved the Blue Jays and us to 7-6. and six. Instead, we are now 6-7 and seven and still uh, last technically in the division as of the time of recording, but unfortunate, but there's some positives to take out of this. For one, you say Kikuchi looked absolutely dominant. There's no other way around this. Kikuchi was just unbelievable. He put up nine strikeouts in six innings pitch, and you say Kikuchi's a guy I'm going to speak about for a second because he has been, obviously, 
His first year with the Blue Jays a couple years ago in 2022 did not go well at all. He wasn't really in the rotation. He got five, uh, five plus ERA. Last year, he battled in the spring training, bounced back, had a great year. And now the question was, we we're all wondering, will he be able to sustain that this year for the Blue Jays and be able to continue to do what he did last year? A lot of fans had some doubt, doubts about that. And he did. He did absolutely that. And he has been unbelievable so far through his three starts. I mean, we see today, obviously, his first start was a bit rocky. But ever since then, he's gotten his command back. He's gotten his confidence back. And he looks really, really good. And he really kept the Blue Jays in this game. And also a huge shout-out to Nate Pearson and Jimmy Garcia. I mean, once Romano and Swanson come back, this bullpen is very elite. You have Jimmy Garcia. He threw the hardest pitch of his career, and he joined the MLB in 2014. Today, he threw the hardest pitch in his career, uh, nine years into his career. He threw it at 99.8 miles per hour. He struck out four through two innings. He looked absolutely dominant. I cannot express enough if you were watching the game. If you didn't, you should go watch the highlights and look at Jimmy Garcia. It was unfortunate that we couldn't use him in the top of the 10th inning in extras when um, obviously you needed, like the ghost runner was on and the Cal rally came up and hit a home run against Tim Meza. But Jimmy Garcia looks great. Nate Pearson's continues to look very good. And the pitching in general is not as much of a concern as the offense. Uh, the offense struggled a bit today. Logan Gilbert was absolutely dominant. He is a very, very good starting pitcher. And we saw the Blue Jays hit well against Luis Castillo and George Kirby, two of their elite pitchers. Logan Gilbert is also pretty elite as well. Throws absolute gas. Uh, the Jays had some trouble with him. Obviously, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. hit the absolute moonshot, which is great to see. Justin Turner continues to do his thing. Kevin Bizzio is on a six-game hit streak. Um, Kevin Kiermaier is a bit of an issue. And that's something we'll probably talk about in a future video, but he's really, really bad so far to start the year. And if it wasn't for his glove, he wouldn't even be in the uh, the lineup or maybe even on the roster, but he needs to be moved down to the nine spot for sure. And then figure out the rest from there because he got pinch hit late in the game for Daniel Vogelbach. And it's just not looking very good for the, uh, for the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, Kevin Kiermaier contract so far, but we all love Kevin Kiermaier. He's definitely a fan favorite and his contract is very, uh, it's obviously, it's only one year, so it's not the biggest deal, but right now it's scary because he's yet to do anything. He's striking out a ton. He went over three with three strikeouts this game, so that's a bit worrisome, but I don't know. It was a rough game. Uh, Justin Turner obviously was the big guy in Vladimir Guerrero Jr., but in games like this, when you have a chance to put a team away, the base is loaded, bottom of the ninth against one of the best relievers in, in Munoz, obviously not having the best year, but... You do it. You close out the game. You sweep the series. Buck Martinez was talking about it. Great teams sweep series. Obviously, it's very hard to do, and it's very difficult for any team to sweep a series. But when you're one base hit away, you got to try to do that. And Ernie Clement did his job. I mean, he made nice contact and almost fell down and fell in between the outfielders. But Jorge Polanco, uh, the second baseman, ran it down and made an incredible catch. And then Tim Meza who has been very bad to start the season. His velocity is low. He's walking everybody. He gave a two-run home run to uh, give up a two-run home run to Cal Rowley, who destroys the Blue Jays, turns into prime Babe Ruth when he's playing against the Blue Jays in the Rogers Center. And then he also gave up, uh, didn't get outs on either of the next two left-handed hitters, which was a big issue. And then Mitch White came in and gave up more runs, and that was the end of the ball game. Very unfortunate, but at the end of the day, the Jays won the series. They have an off day tomorrow, probably well needed. Get some of the guys back, hopefully, and then take on the Colorado Rockies at home, and hopefully they can make a sweep against them because the Rockies are a very, very, very bad team, a very bad pitching team, a very bad hitting team, and hopefully the Jays can take care of business then. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on all of this. We'll have a video for you tomorrow, but if you want to check our video from yesterday, click on your screen now, and we will see you tomorrow.